Kia ora everybody and welcome to our Mental Health Awareness Week podcast. It's been a while long out here to talk so it's good to be back. Uh, today we are going to do a series of podcasts to talk about mental health um, and kind of honour of Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, we just, I guess we just know that mental health is a really important topic here in Aotearoa and a topic that we at Ngahira Communities are super passionate about. Um, and so what we've done is we've reached out to a, a bunch of our friends. We've got a, a really cool friend group called Friends Are Family Too, or otherwise known as the FAF Too. Um, and we've done a lot of years together, some highs and some lows and everything in between. And so it's a, it's a really nice, safe environment for us to come and chat around what our journey of mental health has been. Um, and so with me on the microphones today, we have Bex... Vilitao, hi Becky. Hello. And we Kia have Becky. we have Mao Tautalanoa. Kia ora. And we have all the way from Upper Hut. What's up, Mao Taito? Hello. Kia ora, How are Mal you? Taito. And she's also got Baby Natura with her as well. Hi, Baba. Hi. <laughs> 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 Hi. <laughs> uh, so why don't we get started by everyone just going around and introducing yourselves a little bit, um, maybe share, you know, how old you are and where you come from and, and what you do on the day to day. We'll start with you, Becky. Okay. Um, so I'm Bex Valitao. Um, I am, how old am I? 37, 37 th- <laughs> turning 38 next sure. month. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I am South Auckland. Well, I was born in Samoa but moved here when I was 18 months old. So I'm born and bred pretty much in South Auckland. Um, I've got an amazing family. I'm married to an amazing Muayan man named Clint Militao. And I have the privilege of working here at Ngahira Communities as the community manager. So, yeah, it's yeah. cool to be here. Did you say you were born in Samoa? I was. Huh. I didn't you even know that. that. Yes. <laughs> I did not. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. On to you, Bobby. Um, kia ora, my name is Mel Tautalanoa. Um, I was actually born Mel Paikia. That's Tautalanoa is my married name. I was actually born and raised in Sydney, Australia. I moved to New Zealand in 2002. Um, and that sort of began a journey of discovering more about um, my culture and who I am. Uh, I also am (coughs) married to an awesome guy called Mike Tautalanoa and I have six kids, four of which live at home, one grandson and I own and run a couple of businesses and life is pretty awesome and have a mean crew of mates and um, it's really cool to be here and have this discussion today. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. And on to you, Mel Taito. Hi guys, Mel Taito here from Upper Hut. Um, I've been here for six years. I miss the staff group up in Auckland. Um, born and raised in Mount Rockwell, Linfield. Uh, I've got two kids. I'm married to the amazing Winger Taito. And this is Natura and um, Hi, his wife. <laughs> and um, we got a two-year-old. Old Elisha, so that's and I'm a full time stay at home mum. Yeah. yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. All right, we got the we got the dream team here today. So we're going to start off. We have got a couple of questions, and then hopefully it'll just flow into a bit of conversation. Feel free to ask questions of each other and just make it um make it flow. Um, but first of all, we'll go around and just talk about what has your personally what has your main kind of mental health struggle been. We'll start with you, Bobby. Um, honestly, I think my my main mental health struggle has been understanding it more. Um, I think I was pretty ignorant to the struggles of mental health and then hearing um, someone like close to me talking about struggling from anxiety, I didn't, I didn't understand it. And uh, I think that sort of was like a, an opening for me to start understanding more the reality of it and how it plays out in different people's everyday lives and um, I think it was just being um, more compassionate has been my journey, like being more compassionate to uh, people I know, maybe people that I don't even necessarily know really well, um, I guess, because you never know what people people are going through and I think that honestly has been my biggest journey with is just understanding understanding it more, how it manifests and then how I can be more compassionate to 
to that as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. even to myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Becky? What's your like mental health struggle been? Um, I think my main mental health struggle um, has been um, anxiety. Um, and it's a journey that I'm still on, currently on. Um, I think the trigger for this for me was um, the death of my sister. Um, losing her to cancer at the age of 42, that really um, yeah knocked, knocked me out. Um, and from that, like I, I'd, I've never experienced it before, but I think it was hand in hand with my grief of losing her. But um, never experienced anxiety before, but... All of a sudden, um, I was just on this roller coaster of emotions, mm. um, and the best way I can describe it is it's it's like a tsunami. So um, it just knocks you out unexpectedly. Like things that I would enjoy doing, like I would go to the gym, but a drive to the gym, um, like waves of nausea would hit me, and mm. I'd be dry reaching, wow. driving to the gym. Well. Wow. And I just didn't know where they come from. Like, even mm. in the office one day, I was just looking outside, just out to the courtyard, and I started crying. And it was mm. quite embarrassing because one of our tenants came up to me, and she was like, what the heck's wrong? Oh, man. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> and so she looked at me, and, I, and then, uh, yeah, I, I just, I think it's still a journey for me. Um, but it's just so crippling. Like, it mm. really is well, yeah. a real crippling um battle um but the good thing about it is it's okay like it's okay to feel this way mm. um but it's what you do to try and get out on the other end of it yeah so yeah, yeah so that's been my main struggle at the moment was accept and say yeah it's like what you're saying Bob. yeah yeah for sure how about you sort of mouth i think um for me is uh, Bix and Mal actually hit me on the head with both of them. Um, anxiety and understanding it, not actually understanding that you are having like a bit of a mental mental health issue because, you know, it's so easily swept under the rug um, mm. because you don't know that it's actually there. Um, so just being really anxious about stuff, um, but not even knowing that you're anxious about things like um, when just my mum had passed away and I didn't actually realise that I was actually going into a place of depression. Mm, um, right. So I'd like just be on the bed and just lying there and just thinking like, oh my gosh, am I going to get up? Am I mm. going to get up? And like I'd just lie on the bed for ages and not even be able to get up. So I had to, you know, try and try and pick myself up somehow um, and just decided that I, I needed to get up. So, yeah, just just trying to understand that more because I didn't know that I was actually falling into depression until um, until you look back and you see like at how much you've achieved by coming out of that. Mm. Uh, I love that. Uh, understanding it because I didn't really understand it. And coming from a PI family, you don't talk about that thing, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. it's one of those things that are just like, oh, are you all right? Oh, yeah, cool, sweet. Um, and then the next day you just try and get over it. Then tell another never joke. Really- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, tell another joke to cover it up yeah. because that's the way we deal with it. Um, you know, you just mock everybody else, but really, it's actually something deep down in your your own life that um, that you're struggling with. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 It is a tough one, eh? I think for me, my my struggle's been more around probably trying to manage depression, but probably from the perspective of like self doubt. Yeah. Mm. I think things along those lines. Um, and it's been a journey over the years. Whoa, it's going to get me. It's going to yeah. get me. Um, but it's also a really cool one to kind of overcome. I think in the last few years it's been really cool to just kind of smash some of those things down. Yeah. But I do remember, I think it was my th- around my 30th birthday was probably the, the toughest part for me in managing that and being in a, in a position where I was just like, man, I just, like you are saying, sort of like I don't want to get out of bed, I don't want to have to deal with the things that life are are throwing at me right now um but then at the same time like 10 years later being in a position where it's so different but there's still like it, it, it's still there it, yeah. it's like it never really mm. fully disappears yeah and you still have to continue to battle it and work with it or work on it but the more that you become aware of it and the more that you can learn what it feels like and what it looks like and and then how you can overcome it 
um, it, it becomes something that I feel that you can really live with. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> sorry, just wait for the hand to move. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I like, um, for you, Bob, I just want to ask, is it like something that you can recognise throughout your whole life that has played a part or was there a trigger for you or, um, you know, I was there like a point? I feel like it's something that in hindsight you can see. Yeah. Right, but when yes. you're going through it, you don't really know. And yeah. I think it's that, like we were talking about that ability to be able to identify it yeah. and understand it. So then you're like, oh, mm. is that what that was all that time? Is that why I like trying to live up to these standards or trying to, like, yeah. all these different behaviours? Like, is that where they came from? Yeah, like, totally. Because, yeah. like, for you, Bex, it sounds like it came – like it was triggered by grief, like or by losing your sister, or are you the same when you look back in hindsight? Can you actually see um, it manifesting then, or no? Was it just no? Nah, absolutely. Um, I think I even s- told Manua. I think in a one-on-one meeting we had, um, I told her that it actually hit um, the trigger of my anxiety has actually put me on a journey now where a lot of stuff's come up. Right. And I think, I actually spoke to my mum about it a couple of weeks ago, that, you know, I, I love my family. I grew up in a great, great family home. Yeah. But, um, part of that was, I think, some trauma that I had growing up watching my dad hit my mum. Yeah, right. Um, you know, we grew up in a, in a house that domestic violence was quite, quite um, predominant in our house. So I think a lot of that, the trigger of my anxiety has actually brought up a lot of stuff that I've gone through. And now mm. now I think I'm finally ready and at a place where I can actually start start healing and start the process mm. of, of getting through to the other end. So Wow, that's awesome, Vex. Yeah. But my dad's great. No, dad's. He's <laughs> I actually had some Don't really get the wrong <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. He's, Don't. he's come a long way now, but I think it's it's just a whole lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, looking back at it now. Yeah. 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 No. Well done. Well <laughs> done, Bob. Good filling in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it. So what, like, one of the, th- I was just thinking about, because we're going to talk about kind of some specific moments, eh, but I feel like we've already shared mm. maybe, not you, Bob, about some specific moments. But it'd be good to share, like, maybe that sp- specific moments and or the impact that it has had on your life or your family or your journey, um, maybe just kind of elaborate a little bit more. Anyone can go. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, want, um, I wanted to touch a bit on what Mel was saying just before about um, growing up in a PI family. Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like it's, it's she hit that on the head like, absolutely hit that on the head because I remember um, I did have conversations with mum about like what I was going through and my anxiety and the first thing mum said to me was like no you just need to pray you know <laughs> like and I get that and I love yeah, that yeah. I love that my mum is you know she loves Jesus and so do I and yeah. there's no doubt about it that yeah like it, it is stuff that I should hand over to God to heal but at the same time I was really frustrated and I was like man this is why I think the suicide rates and all of that for PI communities is so high. It's just because parents just automatically the first thing they tell you to do is pray. Like, well, don't, don't, don't be stupid. Don't, don't be silly. silly. Don't be yeah. silly. Yeah. It's like, totally right. like any mental like mental health is like any health issue, you know. Like It's like saying don't go to the doctor and don't seek uh, professional medical help. Yeah. Um, just pray about it. And... I think that there is totally that element of prayer and we believe in that and we believe in the power of that. But then we also are afforded, um, you know, uh, practical steps that we can take to actually take care of our own mental health as well. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's like both, eh? It's not just pray, 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 actually. (laughs) Mm. What are some other things that I can do or implement or what can help me even medically, you know, medical... um, science what could help me is it a is it a physiological imbalance or mm. yeah. and i yeah. think of that scripture you know faith without works faith without deeds is dead 
Like you've got to have the faith, but you've also got to mm. walk the journey. Yeah. You've got to, yeah, you've got to find ways to, not just, not, not, I don't know if overcoming is the right word, but finding ways to manage it. Yeah. And continue your life while it exists. Because it's, I don't think the goal is to not have any challenges mentally or yeah. emotionally. The goal is to be resilient and to walk that regardless of what you're, ch- what you're facing and what comes your way. Yeah. What about you, Pastor Mal? Pastor Mal Taito? <laughs> not Pastor Mal here. <laughs> it's not Pastor Mal. It's just Mal, thank you. Um, no, you guys, you guys, I think... Um, and you also, you know, you want to talk about stuff, but then you get upset about it because <laughs> you don't want to really talk about it. Yeah. But, um, like, definitely, like, it, it's something that's there and and you don't really realise it, but you you do have to come to a point where you actually have to bring it up and you have to talk about it. Mm. Um, and, like, you see it in PI families, you don't talk about it. I just remember, like, growing up, um, I think... Do you know my my parents had like I I can tell that they did definitely had mental health issues because um now that I think about it you know mom was always she was such a strong lady but then at the same time she would have like this real anger like anger outburst um towards us kids and you know you don't realize it now but then you you have your own kids and you're like oh my gosh that's why mom was always angry because she was so stressed out because of the kids and. Um, there's six of us, so you know, like she didn't really know how to deal um, that mentally. So she was, I, I just remember like sitting there and just watching her, like she was just quiet or like so stressed out that so she just do this and you know, like her hands, her head. And um, it's just, and you know what, it, just growing up, you, you kind of think, oh, that's just, that's just the way the eyes deal with it. Mm. Um, and then there was always this thing where, um, you know, without being so racist, is that like Europeans are the only ones that have these mental health health issues, and they go to shrinks and all that kind of thing. So that's not for Islanders because yeah. we don't do that. We just, you know, we just deal with it within our own family, or you know, or else we go to a place where we just bottle it up in our head yeah. and we don't say um, thing about it. Mm. Um, so yeah. I, was that the question I can't remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. No, yeah. I mean, looking at the impact that mental health has on, on your lives and your family and, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. eh? And I mean, I, I remember very vividly how many times you used to pick your mum up from the pokies. <laughs> 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 and bring her to church. I have to do the, the same. I have to go visit my mum at the pokey. <laughs> <laughs> I've I been think, too. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's like whatever coping mechanisms they can find, eh? Like, yeah. or we can find yeah. it if it helps you escape for a little bit. It may not be the yeah. healthiest habit, but yeah, and I think that's the key, though, isn't it? It's finding the healthier habits. It's yeah, like yeah. once you can identify it. And Mel, you're so right. Like as a mum of like six kids all all of my kids are spread out but still um there were periods of time where I was a single mum with four kids and working part-time and trying to manage all of that and a mortgage and finances and how stressful that could become and like it would manifest in lack of sleep or um um like just just my brain wouldn't stop at all and then but being able to identify it and realising the pressure that I was under and then how how to deal with it better, like uh, getting out for a walk is like just something that was simple that could, um, mm. rather than doing like exactly what you said, having a mean, angry outburst at my mm. son because he left like one dirty knife in the <laughs> sink or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and losing my shit completely. Isn't that just normal? <laughs> No, I don't have angry outbursts now. I give <laughs> stares. <laughs> you just have to get in the eyes. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they know the eyes, eh? Yeah, yeah. But it's so true. It's so true how, like, just pressure of of um of what meant what your life might look like at that particular time, and um not even realizing how much like when I look back now I think oh no wonder why I was flipping stressed out I was under tons of pressure at the time um Mm. yeah and and knowing 
I think, and having cool friends around you as well that can help you identify that and, and journey through it. Mm. Bring that support, eh? Yeah. I think for me, like, some of the ways that it come out, like, definitely that when you get pressure or when you feel not feeling good, anger is one way that it comes out, eh? Yep. Yeah. And, and frustration. Yep. Um, and then the other way is that, like, a real isolation where you just kind of hide away, try and hide under the blankets or something like <laughs> that for a little bit too long or, or just remove yourself from social interactions. Um, I and believe then, and and then even just your kind of self talk, I reckon that's one yeah. of the hardest ones. Is what ends up going on inside your brain, and yeah. what you start thinking about yourself and um, what how you're handling it, and what's coming coming up, and that how it can kind of build and snowball sometimes. Yeah, especially if you do stay, if you do stay isolated, or mm. if you keep it under the under the rug. Um, yeah, those are some of the main ways. And then I felt that I just couldn't like really like just not. I guess have the confidence to back myself or or do anything that I thought maybe I wanted to do but I probably thought I couldn't do and and then like I remember having times where I really found it really hard to make decisions mm. things like that like I just don't know what to choose is it going to be the right decision to make yeah those are kind of all the ways that I found that it was it was coming out and I think over time like I, I've had a couple of sessions over my over the years with um like counsellors and social yeah. workers and stuff, which have always been super helpful. And just that process of, literally just the process of talking it through, eh? Yeah, totally. Talking yeah. it through with someone um, and getting it out and then, which is essentially all that a counsellor does, right? And yeah. then helps you yeah. find your own solutions and find your own mm. ways ways forward. And I would encourage anyone at any stage to be open enough to go and talk to someone. A hundred percent, Yeah. Yeah, uh, ideally someone that is a bit trained to help yep. you walk through it. But then even if it's just a friend or a family member, I know in my family talking about stuff is not uh, not a big thing at all. Just talking about stuff in general is not a big thing. But then talking about you know what's going on deep down inside of you um, doesn't happen at all. It's it's still hard to do that these days. Yeah. But then and then when I think within Te Ao Māori. Um, within the Māori world, there's kind of two ways, and I feel like it's probably the same with Pacifica, like it has become a thing that you don't talk about, but when you dig into our traditional ways and the ways of our people, the, the holistic health and well-being was always super important. Yeah. And probably traditionally, <laughs> we were much better at looking after ourselves, mm. every part of ourselves, um, and somehow we've lost our way a little bit, I think probably through colonisation and maybe through the you know, migration that Pacific Islanders have had to go through and the yeah. separations and stuff. So I think that there's a lot of, I, th I guess, in my journey over the past maybe 10 years where I've really tried to apply a lot of the Māori knowledge that I was given and I'd been given and understand it a whole lot more. I feel like even just taking that worldview, um, f knowing more about who you are and where you come from and the way that your ancestors did things and deal with things yeah. gives you a lot, a lot more tools as well and a lot more opportunity to authentically in our own way look after ourselves and each other yeah 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 I would absolutely back that Mans, because I think um when I had got to that point where the anxiety really gripped me I ended up going back to Samoa like mm, I took right, time yeah. out and I was like, just what you needed, I'm eh? just going to take time off work. Yeah. And I actually went back to Samoa because I felt like for me it was I had to go and rediscover who I actually was. Yeah. Like and mm -hmm. find my identity again and just be like, no, nah, this is not who I am. Like, so I, I actually went back for the six days and it was absolutely, honestly, probably one of the best things I've ever did. Yeah. Um, was to go back mm -hmm. and discover my roots, like who I was, where I was born and just – have that kind of connection back to the land and back to my culture, and I feel like that really actually helped me. So yeah, yeah. I totally get, totally yeah. get what you. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, growing up in Australia, I used to hear people say that, uh, like my um, family who are Maori, I'd hear them talk about the land and this connection to the land, and I never got it yeah. until I moved here. Mm. And now I like it's this. It's such a valuable thing. I really value that connection to my my land here i couldn't imagine living anywhere else now you know yeah um yeah so i think that connection to your roots is yeah. super important eh? Kia mau ki yeah. kaipo. <laughs> don't forget your roots don't my forget. friend don't forget. Oh, I was totally what are some ways for you mal taito that you've worked kind of towards better mental health 
believe it or not, exercise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not good at it right now, but um, it's really helped <laughs> over, over the last period, um, especially um, especially after I had my first born Elisha. Man, I got to a point when I was just like envious of Mo going to work all the time. Mm. And, like, why am I staying home with the baby all the time? Like, um, you know, but it's because I didn't actually understand my season that I was in. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but I know that God had um, actually asked me to nurture for this next season, and I didn't actually understand that until uh, later on in life. So what I do, <laughs> Mo, um, Mo was like, oh, you need to do something to, you know, to get out of the house because you're always with uh, Elijah 24 seven. like, okay. So I joined the gym. And um, <laughs> it was great because, man, they would do like all this weight training, boxing, all that sort of stuff. And it was great for me because it was like, yes, I could punch it out or, you know, like <laughs> just do the weight to, um, to release some of that stress or, or pressure or anger that I was actually yeah. feeling. Yeah. And it's so much for my mental health. Eh? Like I'd come home and be like, yep, sweet, dinner's on, yeah. okay, tomorrow, this is what we're doing. And, you know, like it just made it so much better for me because I knew um, I knew what I was doing. Like a, that one hour that I could go to the gym and do my thing um, actually did more for me than than anything else could have done. You know, he could have bought me flowers or all that sort of stuff and wouldn't have worked um, mm. like it awesome um but it wouldn't have worked if he hadn't given me that hour to be able just to be stressed i guess if you, if you um if that's what you call it um yeah so that was that was a great hour out of my day to be able to just be on my own focus on myself um and and just punch it out so yeah that really helped me um also just walk walk from the bush i take yeah. my kids into the bush just walk yeah and just talk to him like they like they um grown adults like okay guys so this is what's happening with my life <laughs> um you know so pray for mommy is, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah oh, pretty much yeah like pray for mommy okay because mommy needs um mommy needs some help okay so you just pray for me mommy wants a um, cigarette <laughs> 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 No, but yeah, so that's, that's one thing that helps. Um, just yeah. out, out and about and um, that hour, hour of my day in the gym. Yeah, yeah it helps. That is awesome. What are some other ways <laughs> that, that you guys find, girls find that you manage your mental health a bit better now as we get a little bit older and wiser? Yeah, for sure. I think I totally agree with you, Mel. I think um, just uh, physical, like, exercise whether it's like boxing or the gym or lifting heavy as weights or just getting out in nature or Mm. by the water like if I'm by the sea I always find the sea is really really peaceful it can be like a raging west coast day but there's a real peace that comes with being by the water and there's a real humbling that comes with it too because you realize how tiny you actually are in the scope of things um and I honestly think being able to, because I'm a little bit, by nature, a little bit of a martyr when it comes to being a mum and a wife, and I want to do everything and be the best that I can be at, at my own expense sometimes. And I think being able to identify that having, like what Mel was saying, having that time to myself isn't actually a selfish thing, but ultimately it's going to benefit everybody. Everybody. <laughs> it's yeah. going to make me a better yeah. wife. It's going to make me a, a better mother. It's going to make me a better friend. So um, I think even in our culture, it's not something that's encouraged, that mm. self-care and taking a little bit of time out for yourself. You know, it's, I think we're getting better at it, at, at encouraging that kind of thing. But for me, that was an adjustment because I would feel like, but I can't. I have too many minions to care for. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so getting out of that frame of mind, yeah. I think, and, and, yeah, just taking the time out. To, to just be it by myself for a bit and not have someone need or want something. Yeah. That's also awesome, Melly. Um, I think for me it's the same, like um, just taking that time out, but actually also just talking about it. Um, I think one of the big things for me was that um, 
I bought it all up because I felt like, oh, you know, I don't want to burden other people with what I was going through. Um, you know, mm. and so I was always angry and people would ask me, oh, what's wrong? And I'd be like, I'm fine. Especially with my husband. Like, I think he got a lot of the brunt of it, you know, yeah. of, of my... And he would honestly try to dig it out with me, but I felt like I couldn't because I didn't want to burden him with what I was carrying. Mm. So I think we need to, like, really just break that down there. Yeah. You know, it is okay to mm. be... To talk to people and just have really good friends that support you in all seasons of life. They don't just celebrate the good things, but they mm. are with you there to journey the the tragedies and the not so good things. So yeah, just taking time out and just talking because it is it's okay. It's not it's not a bad thing. Mm. Not at all. Yeah. At all. You're not yeah. you're not the only crazy one, eh? No, we exactly. all are. We're no. all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> We're all crazy. We've got a little bit of cray cray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about I think you, one Bob? of the things for me recently that I've really been ch- uh, like enjoying, I suppose, is prioritizing rest. Yes, as well, and being um. able to put that into whether it's a daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, but into your life and being okay with it. Yeah, and not feeling like I mean, I know I don't know if everyone feels. I'm sure some people are like, yo, I like kicking it, kicking back all the time. <laughs> but I think I find that I just if I'm not being productive, I feel like I'm. Like not productive, so then not useful. So then resting is not, yeah, not a priority. So that's been a really cool thing. Resting, I think, um, like everyone said, like getting out into nature, getting out for walks and stuff like that is always super helpful. Being by the moana, um, I love that. I find that really soothing, mm. but then invigorating at the same time. But then I think being like thinking of and seeing yourself and your whole self as well, not just your mental. Emotional, physical state, yeah. but there's yeah. there's all these different parts to you, your spiritual side, and making sure that you're feeding into all of those, that you're feeding yourself mm. spiritually. Whether you, you know whether you're Christian or Muslim or whatever mm. your faith may be, you, there's a spiritual element to who you are, and you need to you need to nurture that um, your emotional mm. side as well. You need to nurture that mentally. Like I find always always having a challenge is actually really helpful for me probably because of the way that I'm wired mm. but it means that I have something to work towards and something that I and then achieving goals as I have challenges really helps boost my kind of self-esteem and my mental well-being as well so th- I think all of us have different little ways to feed into um yeah feeling like we're achieving who or not even just achieving being who we, yeah. we feel like we can be and when you feel that way then you then overall your health feels pretty mean yeah that's what I think too. Um, yeah, so we talked about how you manage it now and then maybe like kind of the last kind of idea we had was like why would you even want to talk about your journey? Um, but I think it's probably more about how, like what what kind of advice would you have for people or yeah, how passionate do you feel about this? This is a bit of a random question, eh, but. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. a great ad- some great advice is um, is counselling. Like, if you can seek counselling, and I think, um, I mean, we've uh, we probably all said it about how important and how valuable talking is, and talking through the process. And so, um, like Bob said, counselling is effectively just someone listen listening to you talk and helping you figure out a way forward. Um, that's going to be best for you. So I'd, I'd like strongly recommend some kind, if you can, some kind of professional counselling. Otherwise, counsel counsel of someone that you trust, someone that's got some good wisdom, maybe um, a few runs on the board, lived a bit of life, maybe um, that you could really trust their input. Mm. Um, but I think talking is such a crucial part of it as well, and. Um, and finding a cool group of friends to support you through it. I don't know how people get through life without good friends. Um, mm. So, yeah, I, f- I don't know how people do it. So I think if you can get some good friends. And if you don't have good friends, maybe it's because you're not a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> how do you reckon, like, how do you reckon you, be, how do you reckon you be a good mate for someone that's going through some mental health challenges? What are the thing? Or you know, like, can you kind of think about what do you? How do you wish people would respond to you? I know with um, when I lost my sister, I think the two main things I hated people ever saying to me was, 
be strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, no, <laughs> I don't have to be strong. Yeah, totally. Um, if I want to be emotional wreck, I'm allowed to be. Like, yeah. I think that was one of the, yeah, I just didn't. And so I never say be strong to people if they're going through something similar to me or if yeah. they're going through a real tough season. I never say be strong because it's, it's okay. Like, you, I think there's just this. So med- not be strong. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. there's just this stigma that you have to be strong and be okay. But it's okay for you not to be. So, And I think the other, th- yeah, I think it was mainly be strong because, mm. nah, just have your cries. It's okay to have your cries. And I think at the moment, journeying with friends that are going through a similar thing to me, I think it's just, just let them be. Mm. Just listen. Like, you yeah. know, if they're having a real crap day, just let them have a crap day. You know, mm. there's no timeline, I think, on, yeah, on, totally. on things. You know, there's no timeline that you should be at a certain place in the journey. Like, you just have to let them journey that season out. But just be that friend that kind of pushes them along you know like or just hold their hand and journey through that with them yeah Mm. Mm, it's awesome Vicky what do you reckon Taito yeah I think um, just being just just sit there and be with them if they need to cry just sit there and just let them cry if they want to talk just sit there and just be their ear Um, if they want to walk just walk alongside them Uh, I know that like so some people might, you know, might not have a lot of time on their hands to be able to do that. But um, sending a text is even a good thing as well, you know, like mm. or a phone call just to let them know that you're there. Check um, in. Yeah, yeah, because people just love knowing that you care um, and that you're there. Yeah. And if you're not, then obviously, like, when things happen to you, they're not going to be there for you. Um, so, yeah, so I guess just just being, just being there, just being that ear, yeah, being that friend. Eat with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <That's really> <laughs> or feed them. <laughs> <laughs> or feed them. Feed them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just that. I mean, you got anything to add to that, Bob? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think they're. Uh, no, I, not really. I can just <laughs> agree with what they both said. <laughs> to be a good friend, just be there, oh, listen. Um, yeah, cry with them, laugh with them, eat with them. Just be where they are and meet yeah. them at that place, and don't put any expectations yeah. on you know on people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I know sometimes, like, sometimes being able to bring some humour. Yep. can be super helpful sometimes it depends on the situation but read the room eh? yeah exactly like like we've got oh, i feel like we've got friends left right and center going through crap at the moment we do, eh? Eh? um and some friends that we spent some time with just recently and we were just like man everything around them is really really tough right now um honestly all we're gonna do is come and laugh yeah because that's one of the things that we love to do together as friends anyway despite everything that that they that she's going through, um, just being there as friends and cracking up and reminiscing about stuff was just what she needed. She didn't need someone else to counsel her. Yeah. Or to, yeah. She had enough people around her already doing all this super emotional stuff. She just needed some people to kind of lighten the load for yeah. a little while um, and give her a little bit of encouragement and strength to keep going. So there's lots of ways, eh, if you can, I guess, find ways to add support and value to them and try and get your own emotional needs out of the way yeah I think quite often we can think or we can yeah. feel so much aroha for them that we want to help them and we want to fix them that we mm. end up that ends up becoming more important our need to feed our own desire to help yeah. becomes yeah. more important than their well-being so um yeah. And that's something that is really hard to do. And I always try and like just check myself. Like, are, are my actions here based on the fact that I feel bad for them and I want to help them, or are my actions based on the, what they actually need? Yeah. And who they need me to be in this time. Yeah, I think that's really important. Mm. Yeah. Hi, Elisha. I like can't hear you. We got matching beanies. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Yeah. Awesome. That was a really cool chat, girls. Um, is there anything else that, that you want to add before we wrap up? One closing statement from everyone, eh? Okay. No. Speak out. <laughs> I'm 
I just want to say to any mum staying at home, um, with their kids, just to speak out and take that time for themselves. Um, especially if you're Pacific or Maori, um, you know, it's okay to, to talk to someone, um, and it's okay to, to need help. So yeah, reach out, speak out. Yeah, awesome. I think for me, it's um, I know it might be a bit cliche, but there is hope. Like there is actually always hope. Mm. Um, and there's light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other, and just um, yeah, and just really talk about it, like we've kept saying throughout today. Um, and yeah, just real like for any Pacifica people that are listening, or whatever. I think that's my whole heart at the moment. It's just um, yeah, that it, it's okay to be not okay, and that we should start breaking down those walls that it in our families and in our homes to say that, you know, we just, it's just stuff that you just sweep under the carpet. Um, and I just, yeah, just want you guys to talk about it, get out there, surround yourself with good people. Yeah. And that, yeah, that there is at the end of the day hope to get through those battles. And we're a testimony to that. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're still going through the process, but I mean, if you looked at me a year ago, you'd be like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, she's come a long way. So, yeah. So there is hope. Um, I yeah, I totally agree with what um you were saying, Bex, and and it's choosing that. Um, sometimes it's a minute by minute choice. Sometimes it's day by day. Um, but choosing to um see, try and see the light at the end of the tunnel. And honestly, us us, like like Bex said, if you looked at us, I think that's a part of sharing the story is that it is a testament of hope of um, what you've journeyed through and, and I think part of being able to share it is offering other people that light at the end of the tunnel. Like, yeah, I was, I know how you feel and it's intense, but trust me, you can get through. If I can do it, you can do it kind of thing. So I think um, continuing to have discussions about it um, is a healthy thing as well. Yeah. Awesome! It's crazy down in the hut. We're gonna get you to. Um, we're gonna get you to share us, maybe. Uh, or oh, maybe not. <laughs> it's gonna. It's gonna go down a little bit there. We might get you to share us a little um, scripture to close us out soon, Mal. Title. Let's give you a sixty-second warning. Um, what was gonna be my closing statement? I was gonna say like, be kind to yourself. Um, yeah, like, don't be so hard on yourself forgive yourself um give yourself a break um and yeah like we've all said i choose to put yourself first sometimes Um, especially those of us that kind of live a life that serves others um yeah don't be so mean don't be so mean to yourself um and be patient it's a journey it's um i don't think like one of the one of the younger people in my world struggling with some pretty hardcore, you know, mental health stuff at the moment. Um, and he had a bit of a breakdown a couple of months ago. Um, and one of the main points from his breakdown was he thought that he had already overcome his mental health challenges and he was really discouraged because he found out that he hadn't and they yeah. were still there. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the main things I could do there was just encourage him that actually, you know what, you're probably going to have to manage you're going to have to manage your mental health your whole life yeah it's not something that you just fix and that's Mm. it it's done it's a journey um and so with that in mind you have to be patient with yourself and give yourself a break when you don't get everything right eh? yeah yeah so why don't you close us out there from the heart mal and natura um Man, a, a, a scripture that's close to my heart in um, places of being anxious is um, Hebrews 11 1. Um, so I'll read it from the Bible just here. Um, so it says, Now faith is the assurance of things we hope for. Sorry. Of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. So <laughs> with that, like, Things that you can't see that are actually bothering you, like those are things that you need to have faith for and know that God's actually in it with you every step of the way. Mm. So, and, and man, that, that verse has actually got me through this whole COVID period, you know, yeah. this 
whole COVID thing that's happening. Mm. Um, but just knowing that at the end of the day, like God's got you and he will always have you. Even when you can't see what's in front of you in these uncertain times, um, just know that God's going to be walking with you mm. and he's going to be walking with you hand in hand. Mm. If you have a struggle, struggle with anxiety, man, just then, all you got to do is like sit in your room, yeah. sit there and talk to God because <laughs> he's just going to bring you through it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> so thank Shut you. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, thanks. Good to thanks, see you guys. Faf sisters for this conversation. Um, Definitely wasn't an easy one, but it's a good one to have, eh? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's us for that's us for this episode, first episode. We've got a couple more coming out. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.